What is going on people and welcome back to the channel. In this video we are looking at this new T6.1. So this video has been kindly brought down to us by Ollie, who's a subscriber to the YouTube channel. He's recently purchased this van for his business and he specs it out very, very nicely as we're going to see in this video. As you can probably tell immediately, this is in a very nice colour and this, believe it or not, is a standard colour. You don't pay any more to spec it with this colour. He's gone for the Highline model and he's opted for the 150 DSG and for those that are following that is very similar to the spec of my T6. So sat in the interior then, everything does feel very, very familiar, but there are some subtle changes to this vehicle and it makes it feel so much better. For starters, the dashboard is completely new and you'll see that the media system does look very familiar. And if you're familiar with Volkswagens, you'll notice that this is something that probably looks like it comes straight from a Mark 7 Golf. This is slightly frustrating because there are better media systems in the VW range right now, but for some reason, VW are restricting what they're offering with this van. So you can upgrade the center console to a Discover Pro setting and that will upgrade what you see, your visuals, you'll see a screen. Um, it'll be much more of a flat bevelless edge, but you can't upgrade to the virtual cockpit in the UK right now. That's an option that VW are possibly going to be bringing in in the future, but for this right now, you can't really spec it. And for what you pay for one of these vans, you'd kind of expect that that would be an option. And another thing that you notice when you get in here is this steering wheel is absolutely fantastic. And I know they've been using car steering wheels in vans for some time now and generally when you get the Highline specification of a van you will get a very very good quality steering wheel but this steering wheel to me uh, that's my favourite steering wheel of the range so far. Yes you can probably upgrade this at a later date and you can change it for a flappy paddle variant which you'll probably get in some DSG cars but I'd be really happy with that type of steering wheel in my van. The rest of the cockpit is very, very similar. You've got a different type of trim on the seats and you've also got LED lights throughout the full vehicle, which is a nice upgrade because the old lights that were in this vehicle were pretty useless. So as you can see in the back, everything is all too familiar. It's pretty much the same. There's no real change back here. Ollie's opted for the comfort carpet in the back here, which is a nice addition in the rear. I know some of you probably noticed that I removed that from the front, but for the rear, it works as a real good sound deadener. He's also got the modular rail system here, which is fully adjustable and great for tying stuff down. And again, like we have in the front, we've got the LED lights that are shining down, which are way, way brighter than the lights in the old T6. One of my favourite bits about this is that how smooth this door now operates. It's a very, very smooth door. They've completely redesigned this hinge system and it is very smooth and very quiet when closing. If you were to make a camper van out of something like this, a very slight amount of sound deadening and you'd have a, you'd have a camper van that was way quieter than mine um, and I spent so much money on sound deadening. But just the way that VW have put this together, I've, I've already felt while I've been driving it that it is way, way quieter than the T6. And I'm not sure if there's any Volkswagen specialists out there that can explain to me why it's so much quieter and whether more sound deadening has been used. But if you are a Volkswagen specialist and you do know that, then drop it in the comments down below. Or maybe I just had a loud T6. But yeah, this one seems definitely quieter than my T6. So I think the most glaring difference between the T6 and the T6.1 is of course this front end. Now I must admit when this first came out, I was not a big fan, but this is one of the things that have grown on me. And now I'm a massive fan of this T6.1 front end. So much so that if I ever bought a T6 or a T5 in the future, I'd be looking to upgrade to this front end. Whereas before, when I first saw it, I thought, thank God I've got a T6. But yeah, it's definitely turned me. For external modifications on this, Ollie specified that he wanted the LED upgraded headlights and tail lights. He's also got the reversing camera and he's opted for the mud flaps as well. He's also upgraded the indicators to sequential side indicators, which is a very nice touch. So one of the first things I notice as soon as I get into this is this steering. This steering is super, super light. Now in this model of the transporter, they've changed the steering from hydraulically assisted to electrically assisted. So you are going to notice this, and this to me feels very, very similar to maybe an Audi Q3 or something like that, which is electrically assisted as well, but it is very, very similar in lightness. Now you wouldn't expect a van of this size to have steering that is this light. It's quite a nice touch and definitely an upgrade. And one of the reasons they did that is because now you've got cross wind assist. So when you're getting side winds blown at you, this vehicle can automatically correct itself. That used to be an expensive option, but now it's included because of this electrically assisted steering. Now, of course, as you'd expect with a vehicle this new, it's also got brake assist. Um, it's got a lot of technology that's going to assist you while driving. Um, whether you think that's a good thing or a bad thing, it's now included. 
so you shouldn't be able to rear end people it should correct you just before you're about to do it and uh, I can vouch for this I've been in the car with my brother that's tested out the brake assist when he got a brand new Golf and uh, it did indeed work so one of the main reasons why I wanted to get Ollie here to review his van is because I've just sold my transporter and I was so shocked at the amount of money that I got for it. And for that reason, I think that if you're shopping for a van right now, the transporter is the best option for you. Take me for example, I bought my transporter for £20,000 plus VAT when it was two years old and I had 14,000 miles on the clock. If I were to sell that, when it was six years old and had 25,000 miles on the clock, it wouldn't have lost any money whatsoever. There's not many vehicles that you can buy in this day and age that are gonna keep the same value. So of course we all like nice things and we all like nice vehicles and vans don't get much nicer than this to be honest. And also it's a very, very sensible investment. So while he's obviously using this for his work at the moment, but he has got intention of when he does finally sell this and he's gonna turn it into a camper van and hopefully make a pretty little penny on it, which I think is so wise. And if you're a business owner now and you were looking for a fleet of vehicles, that is definitely an option for you. And for someone like Ollie who renovates houses for a living, I'm sure he could do a van, no problem. So we're on some very tight back roads at the moment now and uh, VW have not made any massive changes to this, but they've made lots and lots of little changes. And I think all these little changes have gone a long way into making this vehicle feel a lot more refined. And it does, it feels starkly different to my transporter. It's everything that I loved about it, plus some more of car-like attributes. Talking about changes what VW are making to vehicles is, I feel like this is probably the last great transporter that is ever gonna be made. Now, people that follow my channel know that I'm a massive fan of electric vehicles and moving forward and not staying static, but this vehicle is the last one that's gonna be on this transporter platform, apparently. VW might change their mind if enough people kick up a fuss about it, but we are gonna be moving to what we call the MQB platform next. And if you haven't already, watch my Transporter T7 video where I talk about some of the news what's come out about that and talk about the speculations what people have about the new Transporter T7. But in essence, it's moving from this van platform and it's going to a platform that is gonna be shared with Ford. So if you want a future collectible, and yes, this is gonna be a long time in the future, I think the highest specking and the most futuristic version of the Transporter range, which is gonna be this exact one, is gonna be the most valuable in years to come. And of course, the earlier ones are always gonna be more valuable and we're gonna have the split screen and the bay window and they are gonna be valuable vehicles. But this is a lovely vehicle to drive. Those vehicles come with cons and that is that they are awful to drive and awful to maintain. And in years to come, this is gonna be as good to drive as it is now. And I think for that reason, if you are looking to invest in a van long term or maybe getting a camper van long term, this is probably your best option. For the amount of work what you're gonna put into any camper van build, you may as well do it on a platform what is gonna last the longest for you and you, you're gonna use it on a day-to-day -day basis and not think oh, I'm gonna take the car because it's a much better drive because this is a fantastic drive. So that's it for this video and I know it's been a relatively short one but I feel like I have a lot of content on transporters and if you want to know anything else about this van specifically you can comment it down below and I'll make sure Ollie is on hand to answer your messages with regards to the spec and maybe how much he paid for it if he's willing to release that information or anything that might be of interest to you if you're shopping for a transporter. If you are interested in my other videos I've got quite a popular one that's five reasons not to buy a transporter however Take that with a pinch of salt because I love transporters. I'm just giving you five reasons what you should consider before buying one. Other than that, guys, I'll catch you in the next video.